Welcome back, you're still watching Trends, and we have been looking at the impact of the Ebola virus on the African rising narratives. Now, earlier we left it with Mehari, but now let me pick it up with you. We've talked about, you know, the impact the Ebola virus is having on this narrative and all of that, but now let's look at some of those, um, you know, issues that come around that. Borders are being shot. Countries, African countries are shutting borders against themselves. Now, recently, we all, you know, rallied behind each other for sports, and that was great. But this is also showing something, that there seems to be some sort of lack in unity. So we're not working together to fight this. What do you make of this? It's interesting when you say that, because, I mean, shutting down our borders, is, it's, it's, it actually sounds metaphoric. Shutting down our borders, shutting down our help, shutting down involvement, shutting down our care for each other, you know, as an African continent. So... Now I think these borders could have been shut to even foster unity. Let me take a departure from, your, from the fact that you said we're shutting our borders and, you know, whether this is not causing this Well, unity. aside from the borders... Yeah, no, it's okay. You know that it took extensive pressure to to make Kenya and South Africa to stop flights from Ebola hit countries. Kenya, as a matter of fact, set up a separate um, 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 arrival lounge for Ebola hit nations, so that if you arrived in Kenya, uh, yeah, they could check you separately before you could, you know, gain access to to uh, to, to the country. The Kenya Medical Association was pressing on the government, saying you have to stop flights to and from Ebola hit countries. The same way for South Africa. I think that if in eventually having to close these borders, you know, if in the inevitability of their doing that, uh, they are not actually breaking any emergency containment rules, I think it's better off so that uh, we can limit the crisis of the outbreak to a particular region and see how the rest of the continent can actually deploy all her resources. Okay. In a sense, yeah. you know, to help him. <coughs> A brother region. So I don't think there's anything wrong okay. with that. that. That's your view. Now, Mehari, mm -hmm. what do you think? Now, I understand the shutting of borders. It's only reasonable, you know, if it's going to, after all, you have to protect your citizen. But what I don't understand is why we haven't really seen any unified effort in containing this disease as Africans. We can shut. Anyways, we don't have effective control of the borders in Africa. Yeah. So you cannot effectively be in control. That's the first point. If we are talking about air transport, perhaps that's possible, but not land transportation because our borders are porous. We don't have the capacity to control effectively our borders. So if there is Ebola transmission and uh, uh, infections that are going on on the border areas, they will continue to happen. Now, that is not what we wish and what we want. Actually, if there was a capacity, you would like to make sure that there is mobility, but mobility is not always good. There are bad mobility, there are good mobility. We want to foster good mobility. That means uh, the mobility of people, good service and capital that enable the continent to integrate more, but also to control diseases like this. And this has been put in different instruments of the African Union, ECOWAS and other regional economic communities like EGAT. So there is no a conceptual problem in terms of making sure that if there is bad mobility, you have to stop bad mobility. But we don't have the capacity to stop this bad mobility. Okay. Now, I am in Nairobi, Kenya, and I, I was in uh, Dakar and uh, Accra recently, and uh, I see uh, some of the airports putting some infrastructure uh, immediately to make sure that there are no uh, uh, basically serious danger to their population, but this is not necessarily also to the population of the country that we are talking about. When Kenyan Airlines or Ethiopian Airlines takes some measure, it's not to say we only defend uh, uh, Ameri Ethiopians or Kenyans, it's to defend human beings, okay. including those who are traveling. So I think there is no bad thing inside 
in that effort to make sure that there are no people flying with this infectious and dangerous disease. What okay. is very important to take into consideration is to make sure that you are having effective mechanism of uh, ensuring and screening uh, uh, people who are, ha may have that infectious All right, Mihari? disease. Okay, so Cyril, people like yourself are still mm. optimistic despite critics that, you know, in the long and mid term, in the mid mm. to long term, Africa will not be defined by this Ebola outbreak, but by its booming middle class and, you know, really high class. But already the, the economy is suffering mm -hmm. now in several African countries, both mm -hmm. the ones affected by Ebola and the ones that are not affected. You know, so we see prices of food stuff rising. We see Syria alone, for example, is dropping, the GDP is dropping by, by 4%. Wouldn't it just make things worse? So it will take you longer to get to that point. Well, like I said, um, Ebola is a crisis. Here and there, we may, have, we, may, we, may, we may take a few blues, but what is going to be the ultimate picture? It is going to take, he was talking, um, earlier on, Moses was talking about how people still think that Ebola is, is, is sorcery, it's not correct, but you know, for everybody, for every single person who thinks that Ebola is sorcery, there is another person who believes are right. For somebody who sees that, this, that, that, uh, that our economies are being, uh, are being hit, we should also be looking at opportunities that we can use to raise our economies up. For instance, pardon me, I go back to the bubonic plague. Something happened because the plague was attacking the middle class and the, uh, you know, and, uh, the, the working class. What happened was the price of labor went high. So by the time the plague was over, the economic... Um, reckoning, you know, for those countries had significantly changed. People became richer. The same could happen for Ebola. I think that m many times we look at the wrong sheets, we look at the wrong statistics, we look at the data that, you know, should frighten us. I don't work by the things I see alone. I, 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 I work by the things that I believe should also be. Okay. Now, Mehari, aside this, the African Development Bank has urged the international community not to impose additional unnecessary measures on countries in West Africa that would and that would definitely add to the economy impact of the Ebola virus and the outbreak rather. But do you really see them heeding to this warning? No, actually, I think uh, if the narrative that we are talking about, the growing middle class, uh, high uh, economic development, and also the hopes mm -hmm. for development in many African countries and Africans, uh, then if this can be affected by one crisis like Ebola, then this narrative is indeed uh, a very bad and weak narrative. I don't think that is the case. As the previous speaker has mentioned, uh, and I think correctly, the trend is there. This is a snapshot. This is a hiccup that can happen in this trend. And uh, as such, uh, governments, international organizations, the UN, the African Union, and so on, ECOWAS, has to take this one as hiccup, and there is a need to address it. It's natural to this kind of shock, you address with full force the first, uh, the, the, show, in the, first the, in the beginning. But later on, you have to have a capacity to screen and identify the challenges and without making more problem uh, from the, the, the disease itself. The, the, the cure should not be more dangerous than the disease itself. And in, that, in such case, what you need is a very important, wise decision of having a capacity to differentiate bad mobility and good mobility. Okay. And you cannot basically say no mobility uh, without screening and making this differentiation between uh, uh, mobility that will be very essential for food security, energy security, water security, and other kind of security that the society needs. All right, and this has to be taken into consideration. I don't. I think the ADB is correct in saying that we shouldn't be overzealous and uh, overreacting to this uh, uh, Ebola outbreak. Okay. The first right. weeks, um, I understand, Mehari. but should not continue like that. Mehari. Yes. Now we, you know, we've talked about the pros and cons. We've talked about, you know, Ebola, the prospects of Africa against all odds. Now let me ask you this: in by the end of 2014 or the fresh start of 2015, 
where do you see Africa, you know, in spite of all these challenges that we face and also in spite of the prospects, the handsome prospect that this continent promises? Where do you see this continent? There are two forces that are competing the situation in Africa. One is that of the challenges that we are talking about, from this burden to demands due to high population that is young, which will come to this world both with mouths and hands to work and mouths to feed. But at the same time, you have a challenge of meeting the demands of the population. So both the demands from the population and at the same time the demand for reform are also affecting the development that is required in Africa. Now, if these two competing trends are not met with high and speedy reform of the, the, the African continent, then we will have the crisis holding us and actually leading to a serious issues uh, of uh, survival for many African countries. Okay. Mm. Now, All right. Now, mm. with that being said, Malawian business, a very popular one, he said the problem we're having with the economy right now mm. is actually not, and it's not anything else but the, the continent's image. So the image is the reason we're having a problem with our economy despite the outbreak. What do you think he meant by that? We, we have had people say that Africa is a country. <coughs> we have had people say all kinds of things about the continent. So, you know, I, I think that Africa is a place where if somebody uh, spat on the road, for instance, you're going to see people say that somebody has actually defecated on the road. That's what the media always does out of Africa. But I think that if for any reason our image uh, hinders us from attracting good investment, I mean FDIs. If our image is not, is not giving us the right kind of publicity that we deserve, I think it's not so much about what we are doing. I think it's about the fact that somebody somewhere is uninformed and we need to educate them. If Europe, for instance, the center of the world does not know, is, 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 is uninformed about Africa, we need to educate them. So I don't know who is going to drive it, I don't know how it's going to be, but I think that there's, there's, there's actually a need for some kind of re reorientation and some kind of, um, some, some, some kind of program of, uh, of trying to sell Africa to the world, which exactly is what the African rising narrative was born to do. To do. And let's not forget that today we are fighting Ebola. Tomorrow it could be something else. We let's already not, have the appetite. No, of course. Le, 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 yeah. Le, let's, and it, it may not be disease next time. It could be famine. You remember that it was, it was, it was, it was in the 1990s, in, in the early 90s, that people like Professor Kalistus Juma and others came and said, look, on the backdrop of the famine and drought we've had in Africa, there is need for the world to go into conservationism. Western scholars thought he was joking. Today, that is the in thing in the world. The greenhouse effect, the blah, 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 the gas and all of that. Now, hold you. So there is something that we can do with the African rising narrative to to, you know, to, 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 to actually sell Africa in a way that, I mean, today's Ebola, tomorrow it could be something else. It, it may be financial, it could be, it could be anything. But against all, all odds, is Africa rising? Yes. Does she have what it takes to rise up? Yes. And who is going to drive it? It is you, it is Moses, and it is myself. Are we willing to drive it? It's up to us. Okay, so let Mehari have the la uh, last word as well. Mehari, oh, we've heard... My tweet is my tweet is in. Okay, tweet when is we in, come back. Mehari, we've heard serial <laughs> talk. Now, in your opinion, what do you think? Despite all of this, is Africa rising? Yeah, well, I think it depends how we will go in the future. Uh, without question, I see the narrative as a, a narrative which is based on real, relevant factors on the ground. Africans want to get out of the shameful history they have been through. The first, for the first time, Africa is now out of the blame game. It's not blaming outsiders. It's basically taking its own destiny in charge. And that is the beginning of the, be the best narrative we can ever have. And this new generation will have to make sure that reform is ahead of the crises that we are talking about, including crises like Ebola, that can hold us back and create more crises in Africa. Now, I am very hopeful because this is the first time Africans are now blaming themselves 
and trying to get out of the mess that they have been in because of external forces, but at the same time, they are themselves also. So I am very hopeful that uh, the future will be better. We will have a, a rising middle class, which will be able to lead Africa in a more stable manner uh, to the next uh, generations to come. But this is dependent also on how we formulate. All right. All right. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you very much. But just before we go, my twistings have to be speak. And um, the last one says, when did Africa fall? Did someone push her or, or did she strip? Is this rise due to levitation or a hand up? Hashtag Africa Rising. And that okay. is all we can take today on the program. But remember, the program hasn't ended because go back online and send us tweets and Facebook comments because we always want to hear from you. Goodbye for now.